hello friends day 321 and many news from the front line so let's discuss them for sure the main focus right now is on solidar russia continues its attack on the city and gains success on that direction at that moment russian mercenaries from wagner group as well as regular army units are trying to close the reinforcement and cut the last supply line to Solidar. Ukraine for its part has sent reinforcements and probably will try to attack these Russian flanks. It is worth noting that all available information about the current situation in a city comes with a delay and each side provides their version of events. Thus, pro-Russian telegram channels already wrote about the full encirclement of Solidar, but Ukrainian sources deny that statement. From a strategic perspective, those fierce attacks on the city did not make so much sense. For sure, in case of fall, it will worsen the Ukrainian situation in Bakhmut, but more generally, neither Solidar nor Bakhmut are not so important. Let me show you. Uh, when Russia attacked Ukraine from the north and uh, the beginning of the war and tried to capture Kiev, it had several key cities on its way, for example Chernihiv. In case of its falling, Russian army could have merged their troops on the left bank of Dnipro river and gotten Kiev into semi-encirclement. But as we may see, Chernihiv stood their ground and city defenders held their positions. And now back to Bakhmut. In case of Russian success here, the situation will not change dramatically. For sure, it's another Ukrainian city, but it is as important as any other city in this region. And these intentions make more political sense than strategic. Maybe Putin just wants to show his electorate that the Russian army is still able to advance on Ukrainians, not just retreat. Right now, besides attacking Solidar, Russia is also launching the attacks on Klishivka to control that road and Pilgorodnya to control this road. But as we may see, just after the Pilgorodnya, there is a river which Putin's soldiers will need to force. And without that forcing, it will be still possible to send the reinforcements and ammo to Bakhmut. Russian generals and ministers continue their internal struggle for power and Putin's attention. Thus, today two opposing camps have been formed. Generals and military ministers are in one, and so-called alternative military formations in the other. This includes the head of the Wagner Group and the leader of Chechnya with his mini-army. And these two groups do not like each other a lot. Generals do not like the growing role of mercenaries in this war and the fact that they have no power over them and Prigozhin, on the contrary, publicly blames the generals for all the failures and tries to maximize his influence on Putin. And by the way, this may be the real reason for the attack on Solidar and Bakhmut. Prigozhin wants to show that his mercenaries are able to capture the city while the regular army is not able to do this. In addition, Solidar has the largest salt reserves in Europe. Translated into English, the city is literally called Salt Gift or the one who gives salt. And Prigozhin wants to grab these salt mines and salt reserves for himself. Now, this is not just a tactical and strategical interest, but that's just a business for him. Putin for sure understands this enmity between the two camps and tries to balance them. Because as soon as one side becomes too influential, it can threaten Putin himself. It is quite possible that this is the reason why Putin today has appointed a new head of the general staff of the Grand Forces, General Lapin. The same general who first commanded the offensive on Kyiv, which Russia lost as a result, and then the troops in Luhansk and Kharkiv regions. Just at the moment, when Ukraine conducted a successful counterattack for liberation of Kharkiv region. This general was heavily criticized by the head of Chechnya Kadyrov and the head of the Wagner group Prigozhin, after which Putin fired Lapin. And now, perhaps seeing how dangerously Wagner's role is growing, 
he has brought Lapin back to work. And small positive video from the Ukrainian military. You have probably already seen a video where the military drops grenades on the enemy from a drone. This is a completely different case. A Ukrainian soldier on the front line lacked sugar for coffee, so his colleagues decided to deliver the necessary supplies in this way. And that's all for today. If you want to support the channel, please give a like or leave a comment. And may peace be with you.